Hey guys, welcome back, and thanks as always for checking out my channel and watching the videos. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ashley Neves, and I am the head coach here at the Avenue Lawn Tennis Club in Havant in the UK. During lockdown, I wanted to keep myself busy and wanted to keep my brain active, so I started this channel to, to create some videos for my players on the programme so that they had some activities to do while they were in quarantine. Since then, since being back to work, I've actually really enjoyed all of the interaction with you guys and, and I've had some really nice feedback about some of the videos, so I've actually chosen to continue the channel and to kind of explore more videos through the help of my subscribers. So if you're interested in some of this content and you want to see more, do hit the subscribe button at the bottom and if you click the bell as well that will give you notifications when I put out a new video. In this video I'm going to be showing you four of the different ways that I like to practice my serve and some of the ways that you can get more out of your serve practices. And if you stay tuned all the way through to the end of the video I'll show you a little gadget that I like to use to analyse my serve power and spin. So yeah, stay tuned to the end and you'll find out what that is. So as a keen tennis player, you should know that the serve is the most important shot in the game of tennis. But unfortunately, with most people, it's the least practiced shot. The main reason for this is it can be quite boring practicing the serve. It's just one shot. You don't have interaction with another player. And it, the drills that you do to practice the serve aren't that exciting. It is the one shot that you can do on your own. So you don't need a hitting partner. You don't need a ball machine. You can literally go to a tennis court, take some tennis balls with you and practice that serve. Now, to become good at serving or to improve your serve, it requires lots and lots of repetitions. But it's crucial that those repetitions are hit with quality and with purpose. Now, there's nothing worse than going out and practicing 100 serves with the wrong technique or a technique that you're trying to avoid or get out of because you're just gonna be renewing that bad muscle memory. So it's really, really crucial that when you're doing your serves, you do it with quality. Each of these four exercises, you can actually record your progress, and I, I encourage that you do. It's good to set yourself goals so that you've got something to aim towards, and also you can benchmark each session so you can see if you are improving in that certain skill. Let's jump into the four exercises. I've broken the four exercises down into consistency, accuracy, effectiveness, and spin. So the first one, we're looking at consistency, and it's the most basic of the four. You simply need tennis balls and a tennis court. So I hit 25 serves on the juice side, and I hit 25 serves on the advantage side. And as I'm hitting second serves here, you can see I'm hitting with a bit of spin to increase my margin for error. My target was to get around 90% of my serves in. Now you can also do this drill using your first serve, albeit the risk will be higher. So you should probably think about lowering your expectations to around 60 to 70% of those serves in play. If you're practicing your second serve and you're making too many errors and you're well below the 90% target, then actually that's something that you should work on and maybe stick to this consistency exercise. On the flip side of that, if you're doing your first serve practice and you're getting above that 70% and getting more around 80 and 90%, that's probably telling you that you're not hitting your serve with either enough power or you're not trying to hit the corners effectively enough. So maybe the next drills will be more suitable for you. But yes, if you're looking for consistency, this drill is a good one. So like I say, I hit 25 serves on each side. If you don't have enough tennis balls or if you're limited with time, another way you can do this, and I like to do this with my players when I'm coaching them, is to split each half court into 10 serves. So I'll do 10 first serves on the juice side. I'll do 10 first serves on the advantage side. And then I'll go and repeat that with second serves. So you'll do four rounds of 10, giving yourself a score out of 40. It's really good to set yourself a target, and if you have got a notepad in your, in your tennis bag, it's a really good idea to jot down a target before you start the exercise, and once you finish the exercise, record your results, so that next time, if you do the same exercises, you can see if you've managed to improve on your consistency or not. The next exercise will be focusing on accuracy. So for this one, you will need to mark out certain areas within the service box. I was lucky enough to be on an artificial clay court so I could use the line brush to mark out specific areas 
you can use anything to mark out the areas. You can use throw down lines, you can use tennis ball cans or drinks bottles, but the idea is to split the service box into sections. As you can see, I've split my juice service box into three sections. So I was practicing the wide serve, the body serve, and the tea serve. If you are less confident with your accuracy, you can simply split the service box in two and aim out wide or down the tee. As we did before, I like to set myself a target. So it could be that you aim out wide for 10 serves, down the body for 10 serves, and down the tee for 10 serves. And in your mind, have a target set. So for this one, my target was to get six out of 10 on each of the zones using my first serve. So again, if you're practicing your second serve, you can absolutely do this drill as well. Whatever you're working on, tailor it to your needs. But the idea is to aim into a smaller part of the service box to make your serves more accurate. The third exercise is looking at improving the effectiveness on your serve. So if you're finding that your serves become a lot more consistent through doing the consistency exercise and you're quite happy with the accuracy of your serve and where the ball lands within the service box, the next step is to make your serve more effective or more challenging for your opponent to return. So the way I like to practice this is by setting up a target outside of the tennis court and we're looking at where the second bounce ends up. So of course the first bounce needs to be within the service box, but can we get that second bounce to carry into a tricky position for your opponent to return? So in my example here, I've set up a target on the back fence when I'm serving down the tee on the ad side. And I've put a circle of tennis balls stuck on the fence and my aim is to see if I can get my serve in the court and into that circle. Unfortunately, it wasn't a foolproof design and um, because I was hitting my serve pretty hard on the first serve, lots of those balls fell off. So use your imagination, be creative and try to set up targets in different places on the court to challenge yourself. A really good one to use is if you're practicing your wide serve is to try to put a set of cones, almost goal posts, at, outside the side of your court so you can see if you can get your serve to land in the box, out wide and travel through those goal posts right out wide of the court there. The final exercise is to help you to develop your spin or your top spin on your second serve. So I like to use a rope and I'm, I actually tie the rope around the two floodlight posts either side of the tennis court. You don't need to use a rope, there are other things you can do. Another way that I, I do it sometimes when I don't have the rope handy is to use a spare racket and I actually place the racket in the net and the aim is to get your serve to travel over the top of the racket. So with that racket or with the rope over the top of the net, your second serve has to travel higher, creating a nice arc shape. So if it's top spin that you're looking to develop, this is a really good exercise. Again, it's really good to record your score, so have a target in mind. It might be that you hit 10 serves um, on the juice side with kick or top spin down the tee, and you're aiming to get eight out of 10 over the rope and into the court. You can then do the same on the ad side, maybe serving with a kick serve out wide, but again, try to give yourself a target so that you can try to improve each time you step on court. You can also use this rope the other way around and actually try to hit your first serve lower over the net. So if you're aiming for a big flat first serve, you'd probably want the height of the ball to travel a lot lower. So underneath the rope would be good. And if you're using your racket instead, that could be a nice target. Try to get your first serve to hit the strings of the racket. So finally, at the start of the video, I mentioned that I use a gadget to analyze my serve and, and progression on my serve. And I actually use the head sensor. It's made by a company called Zep and I've had it for about a year now and it's been really really useful for working with my players but also interesting for my own game to see how fast my serve is and how much pace I've lost in, in old age. Yeah, the way it works is there is sensor in the butt cap of your racket the good thing about this one is it doesn't mess up the balance of the racket so it's the same weight as a normal butt cap and you simply plug it in to charge it up and once you connect it to your app via Bluetooth you can see the speed of your shots at the end of a session it gives you a breakdown of how many forehands and backhands and volleys etc that you've hit but also it tells you things like ball spin, racket speed, 
backswing time and impact time as well. So really cool gadget and um, just a nice way to analyze your progress. So um, yeah, I won't go into too much detail, but this is another way that I like to, to see how my serve's going. And it just gives you really tangible evidence as to how fast your serve's going or how much spin you're hitting. So yeah, look into that. And I, if you, you think that it's something I should maybe make a review video about in a bit more depth, pop a comment below and um, I'll look into doing that. So there you have it. Four ways that I like to practice my serve when I'm on my own on the tennis court. Now, your job is to book a court, take some tennis balls with you and have a go at some of these exercises. The first one, working on consistency is a good place to start. Once you feel fully confident with your serve and the fact that you can get it over the net and in the court, that's when you can start to explore the accuracy exercise, the effectiveness exercise and then look at different types of spins as well. If you like this video and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, don't forget to click that subscribe button underneath and I hope to see you all soon. Take care.